whole of human history is full of secrets and mysteries. In fact, even now in the age of science and technology, our whole world order is causing thousands of questions, many of which cannot be fully answered by scientists. The Time Puzzle crew tries to uncover some of those mysteries surrounding the mysterious places of Kazakhstan. Ancient times, caves served as the first house and refugee for a person. They sheltered from enemies and bad weather, but at the same time, they frightened people with their depth, darkness, and silence. The light of the torch, a lantern, only partially dissipates the deep darkness of the dungeons, and the cold and damp quickly flush people onto the surface, to the sunlight. The pressing silence, occasionally disturbed by the sound of a falling drops or the roar of distant landslides, awakens images of otherworldly powers in the imagination and sharpens the sense of the presence of magic, so our psyche is arranged that everything that is difficult to find an explanation, a person assigns the status of mysterious and mystical, and sometimes even scary. Caves are in the one of the first places in the list of everything intriguing, frightening, and delectable. What is hidden in the mountain of Chingistau? For some reason, people say that at the depth of 15, 20 meters, there is an entrance to another cave. It is there where Genghis Khan is buried. Unique artifacts of Kunir Aliyah Cave, such a stabbing, chopping tool, like a small, thin sword, from both sides of which a dragon was engraved. Extensively in this cave, the Saint Conier saved from the flood. I was taking a photo and I saw a glowing cloud above the people's heads. What is it? Mysterious legends and obscure cases of healing in the cave of Konir Aulia, as well as historical facts and archaeological finds related to that cave, watch right now. Caves are natural formations, generously scattered all over the planet. People had attributed extraordinary qualities to them for ages. They thought that mythical characters' spirits lived in caves, endowed caves with special magical powers. Few people know, but 200 kilometers from the city of Semei in the mountains of Chingistau is one of the these caves. Hello, you're watching Time Puzzle, and I'm Sergei Alexeyevna. Mountains of Chingistau, their landscape is mainly mountain steppes, aspen and birch grow in the valleys and numerous streams flow down the slopes of low ridges. The place is very convenient for animal husbandry. It was in these mountains in the tract of Jigibai, where on August 10, 1845, a great Kazakh philosopher and thinker Abai Kunanbaev was born. As it happens, that his birthplace is considered the geographical center of Eurasia, as evidenced by the stone located there. The whole surrounding area is named in honor of the great Enlightener, and where is an amazing mystery of this place is the cave of Kunir Aulie, revered by the people as a holy place. It is located almost 200 kilometers from the city of Simapolitans. The road runs through the amazing beauty of the place, immediately adjusting anyone seeing it to a special sublime harmony. Before going on this trip, the crew of the Time Puzzle met with famous local historian, Pavel Zhukov, who devoted his life to the study of East Kazakhstan. I kept hearing about the Konir Aulia cave for a while. While conversation go on, then I was engaged in tourism. There were rumors among tourists that there is an interesting place, an interesting cave, there is a lake. And then, in 1996, I was offered to go to these places together with a school of local lore expedition to see what it is. And then I became interested in different sources and found out that the first scientific description of this cave was made in 1912 in the sixth issue of the Russian Geographical Society. There was an article by the land surveyor Bruhanov, which was called Konir Aulie.
We quote here an excerpt from that note. The entrance to the cave is located on the southern side of Aktas, a little higher, where Chaganka strikes at the foot of the mountain. Near the entrance, there is an ancient cemetery with ordinary stone women and other funerary monuments of that era in the form of graves laid out by the flagstone and other undoubtedly very interesting for archaeologists. Alexander Dolgoshev is an archaeologist and researcher at archaeological expertise. He repeatedly visited the cave and studied it. I was simply amazed by what I saw there. This is a unique monument. Well, probably one of those few moments on the territory of the southeast Kazakhstan which should be taken under the protection of the state. Its uniqueness lies in the fact that it always contains a water source with a certain temperature, constantly plus or minus three degrees. Its temperature varies from six to 12 degrees, and so somewhere the temperature is constant in winter and summer. In addition, this is a nation site, and also approximately six to 8,000 years ago in the limestone massives, silicon was mined, which then these jaws, these silicid formations were pulled out from there, and straight at the entrance to the cave, they were smashed. They reached the right core from which the tools were made. Near the cave for a long time, this remains in the stone industry lay there. They have done cleaning everywhere around, and along with modern garbage, they cleaned out the archaeological layer. Thus, most of the material that could allow studying the history of the cave were lost. Nevertheless, something still remains. Based on these few findings, archaeologists can restore the chronicle of Konir Aulia. People used to find the arrowheads at the caves at different times. I also found it. It was badly damaged, but also it was laying right at the entrance to the cave. And the local residents in 1997 gave us such a stabbing chopping tool, like a small thin sword, from both sides of which a dragon was engraved. This is a characteristic element of Buddhist lamast. This is Jingarian feature. Hajimurat Iluf is a member of the local history society Priyotishya. He specializes in the etymology of the origin of local toponyms. Right there, he found many traces and echoes of the Jungar invasion. Tarbagatai, Dilbikti, Kandagatai, these are terms that have been left as an inheritance from the Jungar stay here. And according to one of the legends, which could be based on real facts, when the Kazakh detachment pursued the Jungarian group of soldiers, then at some point they disappeared. It turns out they hid in this cave. Apparently the horses were released because the horses could not pass there, but soldiers themselves went into the cave. Since then, Kazakhs did not live here for a long time. That's why they basically did not know about this cave, or they forgot. Due to various circumstances, Konir Aulie is now a bit away from serious scientific research. Despite its popularity with local residents and pilgrims, its detailed study has not yet been conducted. Only local ethnographers are trying to reveal the secret of the cave on their own. We found two more grottos in which we, Pavel Nikolaevich Zhukov and me, two people who are uh, the very first in June 1997, discovered the grotto. People always used to speak about it, but no one was there. Because of the high water level, it was very difficult to get here, only on the inflatable boat. We found it accidentally because there was a very narrow hole. We got there somehow, got to this grotto by accident, and we found it too. But without knowing it, scientists became the reason for the birth of another legend, as if emphasizing all the mysterious glory of this place. We sailed along the lake, looked at its dimensions, went under the gallery and came back. When we went there, the local people were there, but no one came back. It's good that we put a candle on the beach, because it was completely dark there. We couldn't see where to sail. I myself felt the same as the sailor who saw the lighthouse and screamed, Earth, Earth. Probably it was the same feeling. And when a few years later we returned once more, 
We were told a legend that two geologists had left on the boat and so far they have not returned. So guys, don't go there. Mountain Aktas, a white stone. It is in its bosom that the sacred Konir Aulia cave is hidden. entrance to the cave is rather low, and from the very beginning you seem to bow your head before this holy place. Like many others, this cave of Kart's origin, it is a huge labyrinth of ramified passage. But what distinguishes this place? It's very depth, a real underground lake. There is a legend that the great conqueror is buried here. Interesting story. It is said that if all this mountain rage bears the name of Chinggis Tao, most likely Timujin was initiated into the Hans with the adoption of the name Genghis Khan here. Here he was raised on a white felt. And if so, it is possible that in this cave Konir Aulia, since the cave is revered by people, is his burial. For some reason, people say that at the depth of 15-20 meters, there is an entrance to another cave, and it, it is there where Genghis Khan is buried. Where people got these numbers of 15-20 meters from, of course, I don't know. But people are interested in telling such things. Further detailed study of the lake can show whether it is truth or not, but even if the grave of Genghis Khan is just a beautiful myth, the lake can hide enough other materials for research. During the Kazakh Jungarian Wars, the same thing happened. Jungarian and Kazakh warriors were hiding. And what's at the bottom? Maybe there is some sword there, or maybe there is a helmet. We need to dive underwater. We need to have a research. Local historians have no doubt that the bottom of the lake has preserved many valuable artifacts. But unfortunately, natural processes, including the collapse of its stone vaults, can hamper their careful study as well as study of the wolf. But unfortunately, natural processes, including the collapse of its stone vaults, can hamper their careful study as well as study of the whole cave. A huge damage to the sacred place was caused at one time by a nuclear test conducted at the nearby Simipolatinsk test site. As a result, the cave constantly changed its configuration. By the way, this may be related to the mysterious fate of one of the stone idols that adorned one of its photos. The statue was most likely taken from some burial, most probably quite old because the calcid flow that covers the statue is quite large, in some places up to five centimeters. I cannot say for sure how many centuries it was there. The statue, it lay on several stones, one stone pinned against the wall. There were offerings. We saw feathers of a bird, we saw traces of blood. There were some offerings. Pigeons mostly, we saw the trails. In the notes on Komir Aulia, published in 1912, a nation's stone idol is also mentioned as the author writes about him. At ten and a half meters from the entrance to the cave, at the depth of its first left branch, seven to ten meters wide, lies a stone idol covered with calcareous bark. Homely, that's how local people call this figure. Туристов водят в основном к озеру, и к этому звоянию очень часто мне говорили, что Tourists are led mainly to the lake and to the statue. Very often I was told that the statue was lost. It was not lost. People for a long time could not get there. Not every person could find it. Why? I don't know why, because several people claimed that they were there and did not find it. And when I went there, I found this place and it's hard to say. Maybe 
In our visit, we could not find a statue. Maybe there was a collapse, maybe the cave's vaults are being destroyed, maybe that's why they could not find this statue. Maybe there was not enough time. We were told by people that there were several statues on this funeral complex and that some people came, took them off, took them away. By the way, the same tale of ceased sculptures wasn't the first time when we heard it. They said, yes, the statue lay before, but then it disappeared. But where could the statue come from to this place? And to whom were the statue dedicated, apparently already irretrievably lost? The guest of the time puzzle, Vlad Karibayev, teacher, architect, and local historian, for a long time studied this cave, devoting all his free time. One Aksakal told me that in the first portal, the big one, there were 15 sculptures. A resident of those places, that village, said that when we were small, my father took us to Konir Aulia, and there was a statue of a man sitting in a lotus position. In well, it looked like a castle bed, but he sat as in a throne. Many of the sculptures that are still known to us, which I saw with my own eyes, they disappeared in the recent past. These were statues of women lying in small grottos, specially made grottos, head and back out. The statues, they disappeared. There were three of them. Why hundreds of years ago there were mysterious statues installed here? There is an opinion that earlier this cave was used as a Manichinian temple. According to Vlad Karibayev, many signs indicate this guess. We saw that the unfinished image of a woman lay there. Apparently, they also wanted to place it somewhere in this niche, which they were making, or they were already made, and they designated as Omai Anna. This is by faith precisely associated with Manichean beliefs. Most likely, it lasted quite a long time before the adoption of Islam, but after the adoption of Islam, these concepts, they were like antagonistic to the concepts of Islam. Therefore, they were not particularly welcomed somewhere probably, although maybe they were plundered even in the recent past. Manichaeism is an ancient religion named after its founder Mani, which originated around the 3rd century on the territory of modern Iraq and was a syncretic doctrine that absorbed the basic postulates of religions such as Zoroastrism, Gnostic Christianity, and Buddhism. Its widely spread Manichaeism received on the territory of modern Central Asia. Decline came in the 10th century, but some communities existed in Turkestan and China until the 14th century. It was a sanctuary for a long time. It is very difficult for us to judge now about its lifetime, but the fact that it is very ancient, it's undoubtable. According to the researchers, and thanks to the stone tools that were found near the entrance to the cave, scientists make assumptions that already in 6, 8,000 years BC, this place was actively used. People lived in a cave. We found traces near the cave that there were probably people there. The fires were very old, and now near the stone statue, there was constantly burning fire. Most likely people threw up and made sacrifices of some sort, because bones were found there, basically burned bones of a goat and a sheep, including shoulder bones. And shoulders, guys, are the most interesting. Here we found blades with traces of fortune telling, I mean chips. They used to tell fortunes on shoulder bones, and the shoulder bones were also burned on fire. The cult of fire worship is one of the oldest. It arose at the dawn of humanity, and the rites themselves were similar to shamanism, which existed here long before an arrival of religions. 
Fire is one of the forces of nature. It was called Mother Fire in Turkic Ot Ana. And it is believed that in each hearth there was the spirit patron of the family. This most likely was associated with a cult of fire because the shoulder was thrown into the fire and then looking at cracks and chips, they tried to predict the future. They used it to predict the weather, to communicate with spirits of fire. If a person makes a decision, he wants to know if everything would work out. The strain of myths and legends trailing behind the cape of thousands of years could not just disappear. Until now, it is considered a sacred place where people come to receive healing. People go there, and the reason why we are interested in it is belief, an old one, that bathing in the lake and generally staying in it and praying there saves women from infertility. Brichatov was the first in 1896 when he visited there. He described that Kazakh women who suffered from all sorts of diseases, especially infertility, came there for three days, bathed in the cave, prayed at the cave. And then after they left and many of them were safely brought to bed, then they could give a birth to a child. Vladimir Yegorov is a pilgrim. He, along with his family, traveled a long way, having overcome more than 2,000 kilometers in his car to visit Kunir Aulia. My wife learned about this place as well as my relatives, and we decided to come here, and I brought my wife to help her heal. In general, I didn't know that such a place exists in Kazakhstan at all. It's interesting that in general there is such a place. I'm waiting for impressions, emotions. Well, maybe there is something that will help us, of course. I would be extremely happy. According to Vladimir, he has not yet felt anything unusual, but he still hopes for a miracle and healing. A person needs to believe in something. If a person believes, he can do a lot. Well, the water basin and the atmosphere accompanies it all. What motivates people coming here in search of cure for disease? Is there only faith and nothing more? After all, as we know, any faith must be supported by evidence, otherwise it can just dry out like a stream in the desert. Most likely, even then, people knew that here in these places, it has some specific natural forces that can cure people. I can't claim whether it is true or not, because I have no statistical data, but if people went there for several centuries, then there is some confirmation. This cave, in my opinion, requires serious scientific study. Modern science knows that caves, due to their form, play the role of natural air ionizers, enriching it with negative ions. Studies conducted on plants, animals, and directly on humans have shown that negative ions contribute to the formation of serotonin in the body and its complete recovery. But is the air of the cave only so beneficial to the pilgrims? What physical factors affect a person who comes there to get a cure? Maybe self-hypnosis, or is it contrast cold water? This is a limestone rock. Even water, you drink it and you taste it, it is limestone water. But what is it? Is it very difficult? This question needs to be addressed to geophysicists. Most likely, there is some tectonic fault. And there is something upward somewhere which has a favorable effect. There is archevnik rose, archa, and where archa, there is constantly formed a lot of lumio. These waters, which pass through this thickness of this monolithic limestone, they all fall into the stream, an underground stream. 
it is believed that in the holy place you need to leave an offering, sometimes a piece of clothing, so that the spirit of the cave would receive your prayers. Even now we can see handkerchiefs tied on rails. This is the custom. When people visit the cave, they must leave the offering. Well, it's usually coins of small dignity. If there is no coin, some object, some kind of bolt, a piece of iron, just to leave something as a token of donation. It is believed that the spirit of the mountain and this cave will be favorable. As long as you are in this territory, you will be protected. And since there is jurisdiction, it can provide you with some help. And in order to receive healing, it's necessary to plunge into the icy water of the underground lake a certain number of times. 3, 7, 9, 40, as we know, they're sacred numbers. If you cannot deep seven times, well, at least three times. And when you're plunged the third time, when you are soused over head and ears in cold water, then you experience incredible pain because the water is extremely cold. Perhaps this also causes the same effect as the contrast shower. Curiously, our crew discovered small dark spots of natural origin that incredibly resembles a human fetus on the cave roof directly above the lake. Maybe this is the reason for the belief in the healing of infertility. However, that maybe pilgrims believe that the cave of Kanir Auliye will certainly help. There is a complex of factors, but one, the most powerful factor, of course, is the impact of water. I cannot tell you anything about the composition of water. There can be even a touch of many human souls, the stones. As we know, there is a lot of quartz in this cave, and quartz, as we know, keeps memories, and always positive ones, and it can never influence negatively. It's like the same information that we put into the computer and then listen to it. This memory, it is saved, I think. There are several hypotheses regarding the origin of the name of Kunir Auliye. Thus, some researchers believe that it received its name literally from the word Kunir, brown, thanks to the thick layer of soot covering its walls. There is a version that its metaphorical meaning played a big role here. Modest, terse, and it was related to the personality of the elder who once, according to one of the traditions, lived here. There is a legend that when the prophet Noah gathered the righteous to his ark, three of them did not have time and were forced to hide in caves. Ostensibly in this cave, the Saint Kunir was saved from the flood. Many people of Eurasia have a myth about a worldwide flood. The most famous is the biblical legend of the Old Testament associated with the name of the prophet Noah and the construction of the ark. Noah, or in the Muslim way, Nuh Paigambar, there are legends that his ark stayed in the south of Kazakhstan, as we know in Khazagurt. There is even a construction of such a monument in honor of the designation of the existence of this legend. It is impossible to answer the question whether there was an ancient prophet, Nuh, in this cave or not, but folk legends brought to us the story of another amazing old man. Говорят, что раньше, очень давно, там в этом месте жил вот этот старик, святой Канер, который, который... They say that earlier, very long time ago, this old man lived here, the holy Kunir. He left this place. It seems he became very cramped. He left and began to live his ascetic life, and he stayed here. He possessed a certain miraculous power. He could heal people, and people from many places visited him. And practically, from the fact that he was in this cave for a long time, his skin became so light, his hair was red, but the skin became light, due to the fact that he stayed in the dark for a long time. Then pigmentation changed, and he was so white. And besides that, according to legend, he always wore white clothes. 
The legend tells that one day when people came to St. Conir, they did not find the old man. There was only his clothes lying in the floor. And from that time, he began to appear only as the spirit of this cave, which bears his name, and the cave itself was considered as a holy place. Этимологию этого названия уже, я так думаю, что невозможно. Слишком много прошло времени. Но главное то, что самое название пещеры Аулии... I don't think it is possible to determine the etymology of this name. Too much time has passed. But the main thing is that the very name Аулие speaks of the reverence of this place, and people are still going here. Groups come from different cities of Kazakhstan. I cannot claim whether it is the desire to get healing or the fashion to visit holy places. I really don't know. In addition to miraculous healings, more strange things are happening in the cave, which even scientists are unable to explain. As Alexander Dolgushev said, during the exploration of the cave, the equipment often gets out of order. I cannot say, but the fact that all our batteries went down, we went in twice. And then we sat down with Pavel Nikolaevich. We started to think, so what's wrong with us? We need to work, and the batteries are all out of work. And then we sat down, you know, believe it or not, we just sat at the entrance, mentally asked the spirit of this cave, as famous Konir Aulie, that we will not do any harm to him, we just want to work, and that's all. And you know, after that, the equipment started working. There is also another strange phenomenon, which can be observed in mysterious images appearing on the photographs. When we used flashlights we had somewhere there, we took the photos of the lake, and there are some spots, whitish, blackish, such black spots and a sign of flashes. There are such white spots, and they were different. What is it? In one of the trips of our local historians, an interesting photo was made. Complete darkness they are with flashlights, but then they turned the flashlights off. Apparently, at that moment, they made a photo using a photo ball. And the group of people there, part of the group, was on the photo. Our local historian, other person behind him, with a face surprised from the light of the photo ball, and also there is one more figure can be seen. And above the head of this woman, such a white strip flies, and it's rounded on the edges, such a rounded head part, and then, as if it was a tail, it melts. It looks a bit like a comet, electromagnetic, or a kind of influence. It was also visible on photo equipment. The spirit of the cave was favorable to the crew because all the equipment, including the camera of operator and the anchor, photo camera worked properly. Moreover, the editor of the program also managed to make an unusual picture. The light streaks and spots that you see were not visible to the eye during the shooting. All this is still difficult to explain from the point of view of science. Such mysterious phenomena led to a significant increase in the number of pilgrims visiting the place. No one had a particular desire to go here. Now something is beginning to move from the dead point, and this is very good. What all the cave explorers agree on is not only the need to conduct thorough studies by archaeologists and historians, but also in the main to save this ancient monument from complete extinction. More precisely, that unique cultural and archaeological layer that surrounds this place. Сейчас это беда наша, не только там. Мы с этим сталкиваемся во многих местах. Что местных жителей? Now this is our trouble. Not only there, we come across to this in many places. That locals, by ignorance, not for some kind of a bad alignment, simply because of ignorance of historical data, take the stone laying out of construction. Surrounding plates are taken on the construction site. We had to save two statues. One lay as a foundation, as a block of stone, in a dairy farm. And the other was dug as a fence for a cattle pen. Now they are in the museum of local lore. Well, we also brought one of the sculptures. It was presented to us. Now it is also in the museum of local lore. Actually, there are two statues. travel almost 200 kilometers in total, impassibility spending on the way about eight hours only in one direction, 
Despite this, everyone felt an inner spiritual uplift, not only from the cave itself, but also from the beauty and grandeur of the entire surrounding area, which hides an entire treasure trove gifted by nature itself. Cave Konir Aulie from ancient times attracts people. They come here in the hope of cleansing and healing. And indeed, this place with a unique energy is to be preserved and studied. This was Time Puzzle, and I am Sergei Alexeyev.